Hour two overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line of the final score. Brian Hazio, Doug Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan, Chris Johnston later in the hour. CJ, I'm sure, down at the rink tonight, maybe with his Eclipse glasses. It's possible. Those things are going to be littered all over the city now because everyone had them, and now they're completely useless. But uh, the Eclipse came and went. Two-thirds of us didn't care, apparently. I did. I was out there. I was very engaged. I was... I know, but you did it for your kids. Yeah, If largely. there was no kids, you would not... You would be in your bunkie watching golf or something. Yeah. I did at one point. I was staring at my phone, and my wife was like, what are you doing? You know, the eclipse is here. And I'm like... Act oh, yeah, engaged. I was, I was looking at something. But um, anyway, we got Leafs pens tonight. And I'm seeing some reports already. I guess Tiger was down at Augusta practice round with Will Zalatoris, and Zalatoris said he looked great, looks phenomenal, hitting every possible shot in the bag and walking well and I feeling good. I can't do it. I can't do it. That's what everyone that plays a practice round with this guy. And I love the guy as much as our boss, who was a Tiger fanatic. I'd love to see the red shirt on Sunday in contention somehow. But it's the same buildup. Looks great. Hits all these shots. He hits it farther than any uh, that he ever has, mm. and then he can't get through a round and a half. It's just you can't go the against ass that. Grab. The ass grab. That's yeah, it, it could happen. The glutes may not shoot, but the um, lamp, the lamp, the lamp. It'll be like well, it's something. The shank, it's unfortunately, this, this shank at the Genesis <laughs> was insane on mm. eighteen, and then the post round interview where he's like. What, what what did he say about that one? It was like my well, he said back. His back. He's like, yeah, Laura, my back spasming. You know, it was like Mike Tyson. Remember, he's like, I broke my back, and it was like, what? <laughs> spinal. <laughs> spinal. Spinal. <laughs> I forgot about that. It was didn't spinal. Tyson say yeah, Jim Gray asked him. Like he's like, out? was it your vertebrae or something? And Mike Tyson just goes, spinal. <laughs> And I was like, what? we got to find that sound. I remember that. Like, yeah. I don't remember who we was fighting. That. He obviously lost the fight, yeah. but yeah, he's like, I broke my back. Spinal. I was like, okay. Interesting. Yeah, Jimmy Gray was like, was it your upper back, middle, a vertebrae? He's just the spinal. Spinal. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll get to Tyson a little bit later in the hour. But I'm, listen, I'm looking forward to seeing what, what Tiger's got. He's playing. He'll be there. He's in the field. You know, we'll, we'll see what comes of it. Uh, more on that as the, the week goes on. Um, we haven't touched on a couple of different things that took place over the weekend. One, the Leafs win in Montreal, which they're supposed to do. Matthews gets 64. Reeves fights Pizzetta. I don't know what that kid's thinking, but he's tough. I'll give him a lot of credit. <clears throat> they didn't like the hit on Camp. Camp was fine. But it was noticeable. Like, Reeves was... He was kind of roaming around there, letting everyone know, like, no one can touch me. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And Jack guy wasn't in the lineup. And I yeah, do I don't think know why he wasn't right. Like did there, he was, see? He got, there, there was, he was injured. There was some sort of injury that that came out, I guess, before the game. But this can and will likely be a ripple effect, you know, throughout the league with with a lot of these heavyweight players kind of making their bones again and also letting people know we're here. And we'll do whatever we want to do. And if you got a problem with it, you can come stop me. Um, and the Habs didn't have anyone that could stop them. And Reeves, you know, laid a beating on Pizzetto on Saturday night. Um, but then, you know, right after that or around that time, you had the Ottawa, New Jersey scene breaking out where Nico Heischer kind of something. passes a puck into the empty net and Brady Kachuk goes crazy. Um, and I do – I was curious if Heischer knew that the buzzer went or not. I couldn't tell. But this is one of the – and everyone's bringing it back to Riley and Greg and, oh, yeah. you know, the, the reaction to that. Um, I do think Greg's clapper was different than he sure – Oh, it's egregious. It was – Greg's clapper was egregious. Yeah. I think he sure just rolled it in and Brady had had enough because they – you know, they, they are where they are in the standings and he's showing a lot of emotion, but – he didn't go and cross check him into the head or anything like that. Like there, I mean, he just showed some emotion. I think he had 16 hits that night. Yeah, it's I think crazy. He tied like he a league set record. a record. Yeah, or set it would a be record. nice like for the Sens. Him. First of all, it's kind of rich that it was them. How they said, "Well, oh, Greg, we didn't have a problem with Greg doing that. He just put it in the empty net, and then they go and do that." But for the Sens, it would be nice for the Sens if one time, if he sure did that, it was Thomas Shabbat that skated down the ice and and said, I've had enough of this. It's always Brady Kachuk. It's always Brady Kachuk. It's like they need somebody else a little bit more invested where it's like that that 
pisses me off, and I'm going to do something about this. That's what they need. Yeah, I agree. I, I think Brady, it, from afar, he's he's bitten off way too much. You know, in terms of being the emotional leader, the physical leader, he hits, he fights, he snaps. Like he's he's really showing his emotion a lot. Um, and he's a young guy. He's a young captain on a bad yeah. team. You know, he wears it. He's trying to figure it out. He's been, they've been embarrassed. Well, he's highly a lot. competitive, Hayes, and he's also fed up with the nonsense. He's fed right. up with the losing. Right, but I, I think. I think what you're saying, or at least what I would suggest, is I think it's in his best interest to scale it back a bit. It can't be a snap show all the time. Like it just gets to a point where I think it's it's too much. Well, more W's will help that, Brian. That will certainly help. But also to yeah. your point, someone else chiming in every once in a while and showing their frustration or stepping up, yeah. I think would help too. Because and not a fourth line guy, not a fourth line tough guy that says I'm going to take control of this situation. Guy like Thomas Shabbat, maybe next year Sanderson, somebody else that's just, it's not Brady every time. Mm -hmm. I've been saying it for a couple of years. They yeah. need more people emotionally invested. Yeah, I would agree well, with that. And he's a guy, he's a guy. I mean, he, that's, how, that's how those Kachucks are. I mean, it is it is weird because you're right. Like, he, he seems to be the, that only guy, but that's he takes that on. Like, there's been times... Uh, I'm dr they're all kind of melting together, but they lost, I think, 6 nothing. I called that game. I can't remember who it was recently. Florida. And he was pissed. You, Florida. Sorry, yeah, yeah, but the Florida. disappointing thing is, Jamie, he's taking most of it on all the time from process of elimination. Yeah, there's yeah. No, it doesn't no, I, appear to be much help there. In ter that, that's Claude a team Giroux's just... not going to do that. No, you know, exactly. It, it's not going to be Claude Giroux. He's 36 years old. He's not going to do that. It, you know, it, you're, you're right. Like, a truck, if you look at his stat line, if you just took a – the team that he was on, like it's pretty impressive what he does. He's yeah, got oh, thirty-three absolutely. goals, he's, he's sixty. You know, he's close to seventy points, I think it is, and and, and but he's got one hundred and forty minutes. Mm -hmm. Like that's the the you know, the and a lot of them wasted it. again on blowouts. That's my point. Like if you're going to have those numbers in tie games, close games. Uh, all right, here's Chris Johnson, our TSN hockey insider. <clears throat> what did you make of Kachuk's reaction in particular to Heischer scoring on the empty net? Frustrating year, man. I mean, it's hard to, it's obviously the, the, the part of that's in the moment, but it's kind of what you guys are saying. I mean, I think that everyone came to Ottawa Senators training camp the last two seasons thinking they would be a team to be playing meaningful games now. And it's another year where they're playing out the stretch. So I see a frustrated player. I think that they face a huge off season as an organization in which, you know, the, the new management there, Steve Stales is going to have to look at maybe making some, some bigger changes, not just surface level you know, free agent additions or things like that. I mean, we all see it's uh, still a youngerish core, but it's a core that hasn't been able to get enough done together. And you know, I think that they, uh, I, I just think that they could have a pretty interesting, you know, few months once they get beyond these last few games and, and their season's done. Yeah. In terms of Kachuk in particular, um, you know, like Noodle said, his stats are, are obviously very good. You know, he's a captain of a team that has never won anything. Um do you think he needs to scale that back? Is it too much? Like he's just always in the middle of everything and he's always kind of losing it or it feels that way. And maybe it feels that way because they lose as much as they do. But where do you stand on this pressure that appears to be on Brady Kachuk? You know, I think with Brady in particular, you know, it's hard to sort of change who you are. I mean, part of what we love about this guy is, is he doesn't back down from confrontations. He is an emotional player. Um, you know, kind of runs in, in the family lineage and obviously his dad and his brother Matthew have had a lot of success playing that way. I mean, I guess maybe in some instances you might be looking for it to be a little more controlled or, um, or, or mindful of that. And, you know, I think that that also comes with experience. I mean, we've seen, we've seen lots of guys in this league over the years take, take a number of seasons before they, they kind of rein it in. Um, and so I think some of that will happen naturally. And then obviously if they're having more success as an organization, you know, I, I doubt that, that that inner frustration will be bubbling to the surface quite as often as well. CJ, I saw you down at the morning skate, being professionals that we are, getting info, collecting things. <laughs> it was nice to see you doing that. We were the only two guys there. It was great. Well, maybe you I got said, a few things signed, though, too. Did, did you? Did you bring something yeah, down to get signed? His beats. Yes he got no. his beats signed. 
Ryan Reeves signed. Why would I get something down signed down there, you idiots? You guys try to embarrass me with Nova Scotia, and now this sure. enough. Well, you're, you know, I mean, you're trying it's to a professional point out, oh, show. I thought we got an insider okay, on. So I want to ask a serious you question. Like me? You mentioned it four I'm times. Fly back to Toronto escape. to be at the morning Okay, escape. okay, yeah, hey, CJ. It. Anyway, we were doing things that others weren't. I'll just leave it at that. Do you get the sense there's anything different? It just I don't know. They seem to be in a good spot right now, and there's a good vibe around that team. Yeah, I mean, I think winning does that because I've, I've noticed it probably going back a month or so. Uh, you know, there were definitely some times during the season. I mean, they, they were up against it. You know, they lost Riley for, for that suspension. They had a bunch of injuries at that point in time. And, you know, maybe their playoff spot wasn't uh, completely secured, you know, coming back from the All-Star break. I'm thinking where, you know, some of those mornings like today you go down for a game and you, you feel a little just a little more edginess in the air. Uh, you know, I'm sure in two weeks' time, when we're down at a morning skate before a playoff game, it might be maybe uh, some of those those feelings will be back. But you know, the Leafs are a fun, you know, pretty loose group. I think it's been helpful to you know even see players like Domi and Bertuzzi, Reeves. I mean, some of the some of the guys that maybe earlier on you know weren't weren't even in, you know achieving the sort of things they expected. You know, that started to come about. Obviously, you can go back to January first. The Leafs have been one of the top teams in the league in terms of. Uh, wins that they've been able to put together in that time. You've got Matthews chasing 70 goals. I mean, you've got Nylander with a chance at 100 points. I think that there's there's kind of a lot to, to bring them together. And, you know, you, you might as well enjoy this time because certainly it won't be, won't be nearly as relaxed uh, you know, once they get through this last stretch of six games. But, um, yeah, I do, I do think that it is a, a pretty loose group. I mean, they're already in the, the stage, too. I mean, this was a, it was a full morning skate today. You know, there's there's barely time to practice anymore. They're, they're mostly opting for rest, and so you know, I think everyone's sort of building themselves up for the the challenge to come. In terms of the lines, you know, it worked out really well on Saturday. It was a one off, um, but you know, Marner he obviously contributed. Nylander's line contributed. We saw what Matthews brought. The fourth line I thought had a lot of jump. Uh, they'll go back to the well with that tonight. Um, you know, you mentioned they're kind of into the stage where they're preparing already for the playoffs. Would you suggest that that would apply to the lines, you know, in terms of how Keith, I guess he's showing us something or could this change as early as tonight, if not certainly by game one? Well, yeah, I just, the question is really how long are you keeping Marner and, and Matthews away from playing together at five on five? Uh, at least the question for me. And, and, you know, because it's gone so well with Bertuzzi and Domi on Matthews's wings, I think that, it gives you at least an opportunity to, to bring Marner back into the lineup and look at some different things. You know, that being said, you know, we've seen those guys play together so long and so frequently that, you know, I do believe whether it comes tonight in the second period, if, if maybe the, if the game doesn't start well or, or if it takes until the playoffs that, you know, at some point in time, you know, I, I would think that, that Sheldon Keefe is kind of going back to that. Well, although, you know, let, let's see how it develops. I mean, there's no one way to win a Stanley Cup. Some teams have done it with sort of one major super line driving a lot of the offense. You know, the Penguins of a number of years ago under Mike Sullivan won a cup quite notably with three forward lines that, that were all able to score. And, and the Leafs obviously have, you know, a dis- distribution of offensive talent where they could go that way. And so you know, I think I think because of the circumstances that played out with Marner missing, you know, so much time with the, the high ankle sprain and things going well in, in kind of a new look uh, Matthews line, you know, there's there's a little bit of opportunity to experiment. I, I just I think it'll be entirely dependent on on how how well they fare, what it looks like, and then you know once once they feel like you just get into a playoff game, maybe if the, if the offense isn't there, it'll just be too tempting. I would think to not move Marner back up on, on Matthews's wing. Updates on Yarn Croak and Edmondson. Uh, you know, Sheldon said he thought they'd be in for the last couple games potentially of uh, the regular. Regular season is that fair to say, and is that enough for you to, you know, for Edmondson Edmondson to set darn croak base, but then somebody from the current roster will have to come out. You know, what do you make of that? Yeah, I mean, that it's funny. It would have been such a storyline here with the, the blue line, but you know, with both Edmondson and Lilligren being out, obviously Riley was out for a time there recently. I mean, they they haven't had the full you know the full pack of D men to choose in terms of how how you formulate your top six. But it sounds like Edmondson could could even be in as soon as um, you know later in the week. Uh, that they have games Thursday and Saturday as well uh, here. So you know it seems like I think that that's almost more important. Not 
not just for the player, but you know, he hasn't played very many games as a member of the organization since being acquired ahead of the deadline. And I think, you know, for him to get back in is, is probably a little more pressing. You know, it sounds like with Yarn Croak, not a guarantee he even plays again in the regular season. If he does, it'll probably come, you know, next week when they, ha- they finish off with those back to backs against the Panthers and Lightning. Um, but, you know, I think that there's a pretty good understanding of what he can bring to the lineup and some maybe not quite the same urgency to get him back in, you know, give him, give him time to get up to speed. Although if there's one benefit of him missing this time with a hand injury, it's that he's been able to skate. And so his conditioning should probably be in a pretty good spot, you know, while he's been recovering from, from that issue. But you know, it seems like Edmondson is sort of the next up to rejoin the lineup. And then Yarn Croak will, will see how he progresses here over the next week. And if he can play one of those last games, great. But, you know, I, I don't think that they're viewing it that he has to play. I think they'd be comfortable rolling him out for the start of the playoffs if that's how things if that's how things manifest themselves. Well, Chris Johnston, uh, the other game tonight, Vancouver, Vegas, it sounds like Thomas Hurdle will play, um, which this will Ooh. make people really happy around the NHL. <laughs> oh, yeah, Thomas Hurdle's back. I don't know. Have you heard anything on Mark Stone? Like, where are you at with Vegas? Well, I, I'm a little less concerned about this sort of stuff in terms of the LTI, which I think you're winking at there. Yep. With the question, I mean, at least in this case, Thomas Hurdle's been activated and he's in a position to play before the end of the season. I mean, where I think teams roll their eyes is, is if you stash guys away in, in the kind of gray zone of being injured, but then they, they, they're ready to go for game one of the playoffs. That, that's, that, that tends to be where some of the issues have been in the past. I mean, that's what happened with Kucherov a couple of years ago, and I believe he had three or four points in the first playoff game after not playing during that, that shortened season. Um, you know, I think that that's what gets people more upset. So, I mean, the fact that they're in a position cap wise where hurdle can play tonight, um, to me, it's a little, you know, it's not as, it's not as controversial or whatever you want to call it, but let's face it. I, I, you know, Mark Stone's going to do whatever he can to, to get back in to their playoff lineup. I, I don't think that there's any reason to, to suggest that he'll be ready before the end of the regular season. And I'm not sure it'll be game one of the playoffs, but I mean, my eyes, Vegas is playing within the rules. I think that we certainly haven't heard the last of the discussion about whether there should maybe be some kind of salary cap limit imposed in the playoffs for your, your lineup, at least has to be cap compliant for that game. Um, but, you know, Vegas Vegas is, a, is is aggressive as an organization. They made some big trades. And, and look at it, it's no guarantee to work either. I mean, Hurdle spent his whole career in San Jose. He's missed a whack of time going back before the All-Star game with this latest injury issue. I mean, you know, it's not all going to necessarily come together for them uh, in this season either. I mean, there, there's some risk with introducing new players at, at this late stage in the season as well. CJ, I'm not sure if you made it to the Pens locker room today, but like, what a what a season! I mean, they've been basically dead since December, where it's like they're just out of it, and it's then Gensel gets traded, and now they're in it or trying to be in it, trying to stay in it. <clears throat> did you talk to anybody, like get a sense, like where they're at with this crazy season with Sid playing as well as he is? Yeah, it was, was part of a conversation with Sid. I mean, he, it's pretty clear that they, these guys are energized by it. I mean, the Penguins are a pretty veteran old team. They, they literally looked dead two weeks ago. The map was extremely bleak, you know, prior to this run where they've gone six Oh and two and Crosby's, you know, led the league in scoring during that, that window of time. Um, you know, I think that what's helped them, of course, is the fact none of the teams around them have really played particularly well or strung together wins. So it's, it's kept them in the race. And now, now it has the feel like they truly, you know, they, they're pretty fixed on, on getting the job done. I mean, had a nice win over Tampa on the weekend and, and, you know, they, if they take care of their own business, the path is there for them. And, and so I don't know if it's going to happen. I mean, it, it's tough to imagine a team that, that was as dead as they were finishing the year on, you know, where if they get points, say, in 11 or 12 games in a row, but it, if, if they do, it, it'll be good enough. The math is back in their favor. And, um, you know, I, hard to bet against a guy like 87 with the season he's had at his age. It's, it's pretty spectacular. It's going to be a top 10 year in terms of points by any NHL player age 36 or above. And, and you know, he just doesn't look to be slowing down any, which is great news for uh, Team Canada in a couple of years' time because uh, I'm still hoping to see him play with McDavid at one of these these big international events that we got coming up. Yeah, he hit 40 goals uh, over the weekend. And now what's interesting is he's done all this heavy lifting for them, and it's the rest of his teammates that now have to get it over the top, right? Because they do risk heartbreak, much like they ran into last year, where they were in it and they stumbled. 
and they lost a couple of games. They lost in Chicago, remember that? That allowed Chicago yeah. to pick up points to pick, be third in lottery, which actually ended up winning them the lottery. That loss allowed Florida to get in. The rest was history on the Panthers. Um, and now Pittsburgh, it's almost as if this is a cruel joke if they battle back in and don't get in. But I assume Sid will keep rocking, but he's going to need some help. And this is where he needs Gino. He needs Carlson. He needs you know guys who have really not been in the spotlight much this year because this team really has been out of the limelight in large part. Um, but it really has a chance to be somewhat of a miraculous finish here if they get in, like I'm, I'm curious how you, how Dubas reacts to all this because you know Kyle shows up in pit. I'm sure he's under a mandate. You've got a window here. Spend, bring in pieces, do whatever you can to try to win. And then they get to the deadline and they go the opposite way. Like what? What now? Like could could the off season in Pittsburgh and the future in Pittsburgh hinge on if they make the playoffs or not? That doesn't seem like something Dubas would do. But wh- where do you stand on that? Yeah, I don't see it changing. I mean, they, they still trade at Gensel, right? And, and you know, I think the fact that they're going to look to get younger while staying competitive. I mean, they're going to try to do what Washington's been doing, right? And, and you know, it's another team that's sort of with them in, the, in the, the, the turtle race for the Metropolitan's last spot there and perhaps a second wild card spot. Um, you know, but, but, you know, the Capitals have, have lost some of the key members of their team. They've, they've gone to younger players and, and they've still managed to at least be a team that, that's got a chance at the playoffs with you know, 10 or so days left in the season. I think that that's the model for Pittsburgh. I, I don't think you're going to see them out there spending big in free agency necessarily, um, but you know, they, they can make a move like the one they did to acquire Michael Bunting, who's obviously an established NHL player jumps right in their lineup. He's got a couple of years under contract. And so he's not a, a rental type of player. You know, that was part of the, Return for Gensel, and you know, by all accounts, he's he sort of helped. So I think that there's, it, it's not going to be a, a tear everything down, trade everyone out of town kind of situation. But I think that they're going to have to be smart about finding ways to get younger, but also still bring in NHL players that 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 can help in the near term, uh, because obviously uh, I don't think anyone wants to see Crosby or some of these guys end their NHL careers with a you know four or five years in a row out of the playoffs, like happened in Chicago with with Kane and Taves. All right, CJ, enjoy it down there tonight. Uh, We'll do it again soon. Thank you. All right, guys. Talk soon. Chris Johnston, our TSN Hockey Insider, joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline. Um, Yeah, it's it's pretty fascinating what Sid's doing. You know, him hitting 40 goals, you know, 90-plus points. Uh, He really has been one of the 12 or 15 best players in the league all year. Like, it's not just being highlighted now. This guy has consistently been great all season long and you know every year as you get older in pro sports you're going to be questioned it will be debated can you keep it up and who knows what comes next year the year after that but cj brings up a good point like at a minimum you would think he's at the four nations face-off next year that's a minimum if he's healthy the olympic games are still two years away like that's a long time but if he's anywhere close to the player he is right now he's a lock yeah he's a lock as far as that that team hayes it would be foolish if you can remember when Chicago started to tear it down, they did that after getting to the playoffs and getting dummied in the first round. I think Nashville got them once. They they started losing in the first round, and they're like, what are we doing here? Hmm. There's no sense of being around if you're just going to creep into the playoffs and get smacked around by somebody in the first round. And that's where things should have started to turn for the Penguins when they get in, and it's just first round exit, first round. That's when you kind of know you don't have enough there to get it done. So it'd be foolish to say, "Oh, we actually got in, so we're going to keep reload." Like, no, mm-hmm. no. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, they last year they missed the year before. I think they lost in the first round. They got swept by the Islanders a few years ago in the first round. Um, yeah, they haven't really had any playoff success. The year after they won back to back, I think they made it into the second round and lost to Washington. I think that's when Washington got over the top, and then they went on their cup run. Yeah, and the rest has been largely history for both those teams, Pittsburgh and Washington, and yet they're both there. Like Sid and Ovi are fighting for playoff spots, and it will it be the Islanders, will it be Philly, will it be Detroit? Detroit got two big points over the weekend. Like they're back in the driver's seat, I would say, if they can win out. And the Leafs have them coming up too. The Leafs, the Leafs can do some damage here down the stretch. Like you, you beat Pittsburgh tonight, you got Detroit coming up. Um, you know, that'd be kind of interesting with, with Sid there, with Dubas in the building tonight and Pittsburgh's life on the line. And the Leafs show up and play, 
You know, they're adds, favorite well, to win on FanDuel. Adds some juice to a Monday night, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, it as sure does. As opposed to just another sure, game. I, I, yeah. I agree. Yeah, it sure does. Well, um, you'll see you'll see Dubis and Spez, Spezza in the in the box there. They'll be stressed for sure. Oh time. yeah, there'll be a lot of camera activity on <laughs> Dubis and Spezza tonight. It's a mandatory <laughs> twice a period, three times a period. They get a lot of play. So they're both yeah. back in town and uh, Leafs Pens tonight on TSN Radio. So we'll tee that up throughout the afternoon. We've got Josh Yohe will join us of the Athletic as well on Sid Dubis, where Pittsburgh's at. His take on the Metro Division and what could happen between now and the end of the year. That's coming up in a little bit. And the Jays are back home, their home opener tonight. We continue to look ahead to that. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. <laughs> All right, Leafs Pens coming up tonight on TSN Radio. Jays Mariners. I'm sure there's a buzz downtown on the Eclipse, on the Jays, you know, on Barrios on the mound tonight. There's a lot to get into today and a lot to look back on. We got to play that Mike Tyson clip too at some point. I don't know if the boys have found that or not, but it is mandatory. We find that I broke my back yes. with Jim Gray because <laughs> it's just such a great clip. Right. No, the second response is just Jim Gray did not know where to go for the third question. Like, when he said spinal, there was some confusion amongst the people. Yes. Yeah. Those are tough, man. Like, those have got to be – it's got to be one of the toughest gigs going, you know, in the ring, a fight, how emotional it is, how crazy it can be. Um Remember when Mayweather, I think, was trying to get at him? No, it wasn't he wasn't getting at Gray. He was getting at um, oh, what was his name? Yeah, Merchant. The old guy, the old yeah. codger. Was there. it Larry Merchant? I think it was. Maybe Larry Merchant. It was, and it was like if I was fifty years younger, I'd, I'd kick punch your ass. you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like right in his yeah. face, like bring it, Mayweather, whenever you want, because it, it's just so heated in there. And those big like Vegas fights where the crowds are crazy, and like there's been so many wild things over the years. Um, and obviously, you know, Tyson is what he is. Tyson brings in his own crowd. But um, anyway, so, yeah, we'll get to that a little bit later on. Um, our 12-pack, our Noodles and I, in terms of our 12 yes. cup contenders, 1 can't through wait. 12. Is can't wait, because I can't wait to just look at them and just say, this is better. That's how okay. we solved the list, and I'm looking forward to refereeing this one. Yeah, you're going to ref that. Um so yeah, we, we look forward to that. And then uh, of course you got the the college playoffs tonight. And as for the Masters, um, you know we're gonna do our picks on Wednesday, but we're trying to get a read on how creative we can get with this. You know, in terms of just doing five picks, seven picks, ten picks. You went mentioned you want to do trivia on that. Um, we I don't know if we asked the masses for help on this. Like, where do we stand on trying to figure out whether or not we should just do it the way we've historically done it. Or send us your ideas. If you year. come up with some good ones, Doogie right. Hayes will all kind of overview the ideas and we'll pick an option. Okay. All right. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, in terms of what else is going on in the NHL, we just had CJ on McDavid's up at 99 points. Kucherov at 93. Um, like McDavid's oh, obviously going to cruise to a hundred assists, but Kucherov has got, he needs seven assists in what his final five games. Like, that kind of seems like a lock as much as McDavid is because this guy racks up two or three every single game he plays in. And I've noticed over the course of the last couple of weeks, and we've probably been driving this more than anyone, is this discussion around the Hart Trophy is really starting to get pretty animated. And I sense that McKinnon, even though I don't think he's slowing down, his case is coming back to earth and everyone else's case is starting to pick up steam. And that would include Kucherov, obviously. I think Matthews, if he hits 70, McDavid doing what he's doing. Panarin's been unreal. It's that time of year where the ebbs and flows, man. And you know how important the last month of the season is. And you just mentioned McKinnon. That guy had locked up the Hart Trophy two weeks ago, it seemed like. Mm -hmm. Did he not? Yeah, well, a heavy favorite. Yeah. Like heavy favorite. favorite. They're like, this trophy is his. But this Kucherov, I'm telling you, and I know Johnny's argument is, look at the goals that this isn't his argument, the goals that he's been on for. Yeah, defensive play, yes, exactly. And, you know, I he's don't not, know. And he's I a said winger. it on the quiz one night where I think for the heart, who cares so many goals? Like, don't you just look and get a feel for it and say, that was the best guy. 
Like, I, I just find oh, okay. that with the analytics world, like, we're bringing in, and sometimes, I like, maybe for a Selkie trophy, and you're looking at stick checks and defensive play, and there's other numbers you want to look into, but for the heart, like, are we going to really say that this guy was on for a bunch of goals as opposed to saying that's the best guy? I just find that to be kind of weird. I, I think there's a, a lot of different arguments you can make, though. But it's the one that that stands out for Kucherov for me is that that the closest guy behind him is like forty eight points behind. Yeah, him. the Taylor Hall factor. He was forty two. He was forty two the year that he won the heart more than any player on his team. And coming down the stretch, I don't think that Jersey team that he got into the playoffs was very good. But he was scoring the game winner every night. That's kind of what Kucherov's doing yeah. for Tampa right now. He's yeah. crazy good, man. Yeah, I mean, listen, he's. He's clearly their best player, which is saying something considering Point is there, Hedman's there, Vasilevsky's there. Like even within his own stratosphere down in Tampa, it's pretty amazing what he's done. And I, I think when you look at, you know, who has who has been rising here and who's in the running, um, it's McDavid, Matthews, McKinnon. Those, in my opinion, are the three best centers in the world. I think the other guy would be Dreisaitl, right? That would wrap up your four best centers in, in the world. And then it's Kucherov, Pasternak, Panarin, who I think if you were starting a team, you know, for the next year, not the next decade, but for the next year, those probably would be the first three wingers to come off the board in terms of impact, in terms of point right. production, in terms of driving play. And, you know, sure, you could look at other Rantanen's great. You know, there's other great, great players. But I think that's what kind of makes this whole story special is that it's not – there's no Cinderella here. Like McDavid's – how can he be a Cinderella? Matthews can't be. You know, Kucherov's not. Kucherov's already won a heart. You know, maybe Panarin, but he's been a, a top-fledged player for a decade or close to it. Pasternak, you know, these are yeah. the best players at the respective positions all in their primes, all on really good teams. And as a result, I think it's making it even more difficult because it's really clouding everything because they're all great stories, all great players, all best players on very good teams. But there, yeah, you're right. There's no Sam Reinhardt here. There's right. no, you know, a guy who's come out of nowhere. But the thing for me, guys, is everyone's got a trophy that they can win. Like the Hart Trophy is for the MVP overall, but there's an Art Ross there's a Rocky Richard, there's a Vesna, there's a Norris. So, you know, even if those guys don't win the heart, they're still probably going to take home other trophies. Yeah, but that's the king the daddy topper noodles. Like, I'm sure Kucherov is like, I, I really don't know what he would value or think as far as individual awards, but he's probably one of those guys that shrugs off the Art Ross like, I want to win the Art Trophy, man. Yeah, that's well, the one. L l let me ask you guys this. It is Tampa... Where they are in the playoffs is Kucherov's not this team on this team. Of course this not. They're they're. I think <laughs> no they're closer way. to Detroit. You know, like they're they're still they're in it. Well, that's uh, they're in it. But he is he is right. a massive factor, massive, and they're getting hot dude. at the right time. They are red hot. Like Pittsburgh clipped them. They almost got them. But and you look at their schedule. They, yeah, it's they, really soft. Like they may win out here yeah. and finish with you know well over a hundred points. Where there was a time not that long ago where they were. In and out of the playoffs, and yeah. it was not a guarantee they were going to yeah. make the and playoffs. Dude, props to like J John Cooper seems to like just fall notches down. We're like mentioning about great coaching. We go to Brindamore a lot. We talk about Pete DeBoer. We talk about Cassidy, but that team didn't have Vasilevsky for two months. And yeah. like to just kind of keep their head above water and hold the fort down, like he yeah. does a masterful job down there, man. Masterful yeah. and job. And he's never won yeah, a Jack Adams. I did a game. <laughs> never won one. I did a game in Ottawa, guys, that the goaltending tandem was Johansson, Jerry Johansson, and Matt Tompkins. Matt Tompkins got his first start that night. Like, that's that's what you're dealing with, literally. Like, and Vasilevsky's come back, and he's, he's starting to peak at the right time. But you're right. They missed him for two months. They didn't have any you know, other team that had a stud in net like that is just they're they're donezo, man. Yeah. yeah, it's it would be trouble. And again, that's why Kucherov I, I think makes a very compelling case that even with that happening, he was cooking constantly. You know, power play five on five. 
what have you. And and again, I, I look at McKinnon, who it didn't see. It was two weeks ago. It did seem like it was basically wrapped up. And I still think it's trending in that direction. He probably will end up winning the heart, but it's no guarantee. It's almost as if when that right. point streak came to an end at home, it's like, all right, that's that's a notch off your belt. Who else are we looking at here in terms of statistics? And even if you focus on Matthews, you know, and everything's breaking his way. He puts one off Savard's skate and it goes in the other night. Mm-hmm. But this guy's got 64 goals. He's two away from setting a new modern-day record, as we've established many times on the show. Alex Ovechkin's career high is 65. He's going to pass that. Yeah. Right, it would be a shock if he didn't score at least two more goals. And hey, same thing with Austin Matthews. I heard a bunch of people three weeks ago say, "Well, if the guy gets seventy and they get in, he's going to win the heart." Right, and doesn't like seem 70. like that's the case anymore. That's, no, that's it's almost crazy. like there's this little chatters that go around where they just disappear. Where it's like, what happened to what happened to if Matthews gets seventy and they get in, he wins the heart. Right, like seventy goals. People put an emphasis on that, like. If, and we've said it before, if anybody else, and I go to Barzell because that would be a story, where if Barzell was going for 70 right now and the Islanders were, like, the Islanders were where Toronto is and if Barzell had 70, he would be the runaway favorite for the heart right now mm. because everyone would be like, Matthew, Barzell's going to get 70 goals. Well, and that's what I'm saying about how all of these players involved are the best at their craft. Yeah, you know, like and I think what they do year after year, people kind of take it for granted. They're like... As opposed to appreciating greatness, they just say, "Now nah, that's just what that guy does." Yeah, exactly. And I, I think wow. the guy that's probably got the biggest beef here, and it, it may just simply be when he is playing. I know what you're going to say. Can I guess who you're going to say? Go ahead, McDavid. No, David. No, David Pasternak. Pasta. Like I, I went back because last week we started talking about last oh, year's you votes. Were digging. You were digging. I was digging. Oh, well, because again, good everyone's catch. buzzing now about Kucherov having so many more points than everyone else on his team and Pasternak had like 44 more points than anybody last year on his team he scored 61 goals 61 goals he had like 44 more points than anyone else on the clear-cut best team we've seen I know but another guy got 153 points I understand that but that gets back to what you're saying about Kucherov with McDavid it wasn't well what about defense what about does he kill penalties did he do this is his team it was just with McDavid well it's McDavid and he scored 64 and 153 so no one's allowed to have the conversation where what I'm saying is pasta like he had 61 goals on the clear-cut best team in the league Clear yeah. cut best team. He was the best player on the best right. team. Yeah, in the and league it was almost year. treated like a thirty goal season. Basically, like don't even bring it up. You're wasting our time. And this year, he's doing it again. Where you know, I haven't looked up his stats recently, but he's he's lapping the Bruins in terms of points, and he's you know he's going to put up massive massive numbers again. And this guy consistently over the last he's three got or four years, seven points right now. He's got 107 points. How many goals does he have? 47 so and 60 right So now. he's going to hit 50 goals likely and like 115 points. And where's he in this? You know, and, and again, I'm not saying I would vote him ahead of three or four other guys. It just sometimes it's it's the Dale Howarchuk effect. How often do we hear that in the 80s? Well, yeah. if it wasn't for Gretzky, you know, Howarchuk would be the man. If it wasn't for the Flames, Winnipeg would have won. And it's like pasta just happens to be – in this era with McDavid, with Matthews, with McKinnon. Now you got Panarin creeping up. Now you got, you know, dry sidle popping in and out. And past is just right there, 50 plus a year, 61 last year, and not getting a sniff. Where you look at the Taylor Hall year, you look at the Corey Perry year, he's his years, the last couple of years, have blown them out of the water, yet they weren't competing against the freaks that are playing in the league right now. And, yeah. you know, there's nothing that you timing, can't control man. that. It is timing. Pick but your freak. That's what the heart trophy's called. Pick your freak. Pick your freak. That's what it is this year yeah. because they are freakish, freakish numbers. Yes. See, and, and guys, I don't subscribe to, well, it's a winger or a centerman because then you could just go, well, the goalie's the most important. And mm-hmm. then, like, to me, it's how important you are to your team and, you know, the most valuable player to their team. So whether you're a winger, a centerman, a defenseman, or a goaltender, you can, you know, and all of these guys, we can make a case. The four or five that you just laid out, Brian, and Panarin, and, you know, Sid, and whoever else Mm -hmm. is going to come into the conversation here in the last 10 days. But there's an argument for all of them. There's an argument for Hellebuck. There's an, you know, there's an argument for, for, but 
it's it, Quinn Hughes. It's going to have to, you know, somebody's going to win it. Somebody's going to, you know, there's going to, yeah. I, I don't think there's going to be a unanimous or close to it this year. For right. Sure. That's the one thing. That's what I think I'm, I'm looking forward to is the group think will be gone. There'll still be fights. There'll still be people snapping and how could you do this and how could you do that? But you could make a legitimately reasonable case for six or seven guys, you know, and at least four or five where you absolutely could pinpoint them and say they've had a great year. They've checked every box. They've done it their own way in some sort of unique fashion, and it worked. Um, all right, our, our 12 pack of cup contenders, cup favorites. We got to figure out how, how we're going to label this. But always going to pit Noodles and I against each oh, other at 6 o'clock. God, I can't wait for this. This will be good. I can't wait for this because I've been waiting. I owe you both a kick in the junk for okay. what you've done to me. So go <laughs> ahead. All right. So we'll get to that in about 20 minutes. Uh, we've got the Jays in action tonight. We'll get more into the Alec Manoa start, too. We talked about it with Keegan. It's depressing. Like, it really is. And It is. Man. I don't it's think David Duvall, when he fell off the map and he couldn't hit a golf ball, it's yeah. – I don't know how else that it's, it's gone. It's shocking. It's truly shocking what he represented a year ago, not five years ago with multiple Tommy Johns. Like, this guy has not had Tommy John. He hasn't had, like, reconstructive surgery of his labrum or something. No. This guy just has effectively forgotten how to pitch. Yeah, it's and, upstairs. It's mental. He's lost it, and there's no other way to describe it. Last year, it was like, okay, conditioning is a massive problem here. He seemed to address that now, and now there's gremlins up top where it's like, and look, man, I'm not a pitching expert, but there's something funky in the way he's delivering the baseball. It looks a little bit different, and I don't know if that's compensation or experimenting, but it, it's gone, dude. Mm-hmm. It's It's gone. Yeah, he can't throw strikes. No. Doesn't matter. Major leagues, single A, Florida Complex League. Yeah, it really, it really doesn't matter at this point, point. Uh, and it's a shame because he he was such a star and he was such an easy guy to root for, and he was going to be the face of this rotation for the next decade. Legit All Star appearances, making a fortune, face of the franchise. The whole nine, dude. It's opening night tonight. This guy's down in Dunedin watching on TV. And I um, told you a month ago. I think he was looking down the line at some type of Garrett Cole type of contract. That's where I thought he was trending towards. Yeah. And now this guy can't get out a, a, a single A player. Honestly, that if he had, if he replicated his stats from two years ago last year, so he had put together a three year campaign, there was a chance that after the Otani thing fell through, they were they would say, you know how we compensate in bad PR? We give this guy a monster deal and just say he's here. He's locked in. He's our He's guy. He's our guy. <laughs> yeah, and it's obviously been the complete opposite, and it's been self-inflicted. The Jays have done whatever they can, to my knowledge, to make it work for them, and it just hasn't. Um, so Jays Mariners tonight, the home opener down at the Rogers Center. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050, and on the TSN app. Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel. Something to chew on, brought to you by Boston Pizza, Canada's favorite sports bar from tip-offs to tie bites and puck drops to pizza. BP's elite lineups of apps, wings, and ice cold beers always dialed in for game time. And ahead of the home opener tonight, we've been asking people, what are you looking forward to tonight? Like if you were going down to the game, uh, what are you thinking as you roll into the park? Is it about the renovations? Is it the Barrios-Castillo matchup? Is it if the bats can wake up? And I would think if you're going down there, it's the renovations, right? Although we had Keegan on last hour, and he's like, I don't know where this money went because it looks cool, but it doesn't look that much different than it did last year. Um, But it seems like, and not surprisingly, a majority of the votes, 68% of the votes are coming in saying if the bats are going to wake up, and they did, you know, they, they they won one of the three games in New York. They did actually storm back on Saturday after Gosman got lit up, and they put a few runs on the board yesterday. But that's collectively the constant conversation with this fan base right now. Whether you're at a Boston pizza or you're, you know, in the garage with your buddies, it's like bats, 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 bats. You know, when are they going to hit? What are they going to do with this lineup? Schneider's in the lineup tonight. I think he's hitting fifth. Um, Ernie Clement is giving them big at bats. We love Ernie. <laughs> My guy. Yeah. Fans I've Ernie. talked to, Hayes, they all refer to it as because they can't get it out of their head that they were all in on Otani. And they're just like, this was honestly the best plan B you can come up with. 
And mind you, this is when they you know can't get a hit and the offense is struggling again, as Keegan mentioned when we spoke with him. But that's the sense I get. It's like, why didn't you go get Bellinger? Why didn't you? Why didn't you go get more substantial guys in that lineup? And it just that that's what bugs right. people, man. Yeah, and that's what's amazing about it is that it is. David Schneider and Ernie Clement. Yes, dude. It's not Cody to, Bellinger or somebody like that. Yeah, exactly. And and Turner's been good, you know, and obviously Turner uh, will be in the lineup tonight. Um, but, yeah, the bats are the constant conversation. When Otani came and went, like you said, it, it didn't seem to pivot. And it's a, it's a weird vibe going into the game. And I'm not even being facetious. This eclipse is kind of hanging over everybody. Everyone was talking about the eclipse today as opposed right. to the home opener. Um, you got the Leafs cooking, you got Sid in town. There's other distractions. You know, it'll be a packed house. Of course it will be tonight. And there is recent history against Seattle, and Castillo is a good pitcher that hasn't been pitching well. He's been getting hit really, really hard. Um, and it lined up beautifully if you're Barrios. You got the ball opening day, and you got the ball for the home opener. But, um, yeah, I'm curious what the vibe is like tonight, what they have planned for the unveiling and ultimately what this homestand looks like because they're home for a while here, as you would expect. And, you know, they start four and six through ten, long season ahead. They're still in the race. Um, but those bats have got to get cooking at some point. All right, least Pens tonight. More on that with Josh Yohe will join us of The Athletic on Sid, Dubas, where the Pens are at. We'll get to our cup picks, one through 12. A lot of baseball news in terms of aces around baseball getting hurt, like Strider down in Atlanta. Just reading Framber Valdez is scratched today because of elbow sno- soreness down in Houston. Crazy, like, it's a real man. issue what's going on in baseball. The amount of arms that are just being blown out constantly. Um, so we'll right. see where that story goes as well. Final hour coming up. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app.